Okay, if you guys are here from the last video, welcome back. I appreciate you guys returning for the final installment of this repair. Uh, this is a 3.5 liter V6 GM engine in a Saturn. And we had a massive coolant leak from back on the cylinder head and a lot of engine oil leaks going on back here. Ended up pulling off the intake manifold and I'm gonna reseal this lower manifold and uh, replace the valve cover gaskets. And this will arrest all of the lubrication and seepage that this engine suffers from. So stay tuned, this is gonna be the last video. I'm gonna try to make it as short as possible, but uh, we all know how that thing, how that works out. Uh, anyway, that being said, enjoy the show. I'm gonna blow this engine one final time just to make sure there's no debris in the intake runners. Real quick like, there's some, oh, there's some more. Okay, we may now proceed. All right, I have already taken the liberty of cleaning up the lower intake in the interest of saving a little bit of time. So what we need to do first is put a bead of sealant between the block and the cylinder head right here at that little gap. If you do not, then oil will weep past the gaskets and leak everywhere. And that would be bad, because then I gotta do the job a second time. So we'll set those little dabs up and then place the gaskets into their position. You see how it smush the silicone out here and here. That's what we're looking for. Set the next one up. And there are little guide pins that fit into holes drilled in the cylinder head. That way it locates these properly and they can't move around. And just like before, I always put another dab of silicone on the top right here, just to ensure that a good seal is made. Run that one in. Okay, let's get the push rods in. They're all going to go back in in the same order in which they were removed. They're going into the same place. Wipe each one down individually with a fresh clean towel just to make sure that there's no dust or debris. Okay, that is the shorter one. There. One bank complete. Set the second bank up. make an effort to keep the same orientation because the surfaces are worn into the surface of its mate. Um, some people disagree with this. Uh, I figured it couldn't hurt so I do it. That being said, let's run these rocker arms down and then we will apply final torque with a torque wrench because these are internal engine components and those always get a torque wrench. I mean, not always. You can probably get away with it on these rocker studs. But I don't like to leave room for error. Not when it comes to internal work. I see a misalignment. Now the reason some of these are tightening down more than others is the camshaft position. 
For example, these valves are open, these are closed. So I had more threads to run down on that particular rocker arm. looked up the specified amount and the proper torque for these bolts is 25 foot pounds so let us indulge in some actual clicks and placed and torqued before the silicone starts to set up. As I said, I already have taken the liberty of cleaning this up and preparing it. And we're just gonna maneuver it right in. Caption. That's that, she's in place. Okay, I did get replacement holes, so we'll set the center ones in. And go ahead and run around. They haven't reached bottom yet, but the thread locker is uh, providing some additional friction, but I just want to get them all threaded as quickly as possible. Weird noises. I, I, I didn't, I didn't com comprehend a, a thing you said. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to, but... Stop being racist. Stop being racist, Pete. No, we don't. Pete's being racist against yeah, Colombians you, because he's Colombian. So much people. Don't Seriously. Traitor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're the one that was watching too of mine. I'll get that one last. Wow. It's bottomed out now. That's good. All right, let's get these two little, little hidden away, difficult bolts snugged up some. There we go, click. And I got another one over here on this side. We'll get that one real fast like. And then we'll apply some torque to the rest of these manifold bolts. And there's our click. That's a pre-click, not an actual like finalized click. Now, in, that was loud. Okay, in order to torque these, we have to do it in three steps. There's gonna be three separate passes that have to take place. First pass is going to be 62 inch pounds, and we start right here with number one. There's 62 inch pounds. Two, that was already there. Three, four, that's five. Yeah. 
Devin, I think I can kind of reach that one, maybe, probably not. I don't have an, uh, that's not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna wing that one with a wrench. Ooh, maybe, ooh, shorter socket, let's try that. Let's see if I can get in there on that guy. Go on now. It's a wobbly drive, it should, yeah, almost. Okay. Okay, after 62, we step it up to a doo doo doo. 115 inch pounds. Doo -doo -doo. Two. Three. Four. Got five right here. Here's number six. Click. And seven and eight on this side. Seven. Eight, okay. And final pass moves into the foot pound scale at 18 foot pounds. And again, that'll be in the same sequence. Wrong socket. Uh oh, you guys put that on. There. 18 pounds coming up. Click. 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 Since the torque setting is so whoa, flashlight gravity. Since the torque is so low, the clicks are not very profound. But uh, I can feel them. Click. There we go. Wow, these angles are really weird. Uh oh. A longer extension. Let's try that. I have to get this at the proper angle so as to not multiply torque. All right. Trying to cover up the sound of the radio so I don't get copyright. Click. And the other two. There's one that's, uh, that's a click. And here comes the final. Right there. All right. We are torqued to specified specification. All right. Let's back this up a little bit and get these valve covers in. I've got... Uh, the front valve cover cleaned up a little bit and the gasket is set up in it so we need to get a little bit of silicone right here in those little divots that'll prevent uh, fluid from leaking out through the seam and we'll do the front one first because that's easy and then i'll move around to the to the back side a little bit of sealant right there nothing too much a little bit more over here and now we can set the uh, valve cover in position. I may have done it off camera, but this seal surface here did get wiped down. There we go. Let's get that one started. Because we do not want to strip bolt holes in the cylinder heads. That would be very bad. Big. All right, let's draw it down with the top two. Now, torque on these particular fasteners does not influence the clamping force from the cap to the cylinder head because these bolts will bottom out so they can only produce X amount of clamping force. So if they have a leak, tightening them up will not do any good. It will only serve to damage the threads or the bolt or the head, etc. We just want enough torque on these to prevent them from backing out. And that is all. All right, let's move around to the back side and uh, 
do the uh, bank two valve cover gasket, then we can put on all the rest of the supporting equipment, including that bracket over there. We'll, we'll reseal that now. That's our next step. All right, same protocol, a little bit of sealant right here in that divot. And another dab on the other side. This is the sketchy part. This one's harder to see and reach, so I don't want to disturb the gasket. They can fall off and you won't notice until it's all back together and running and then you get a oil leak out of the valve cover, which sucks every time. And there's that last little guy down there. can't see. There. Click. Yeah, a little bit more on this one. Click. Now this one I'm going to check behind it with a mirror just to make sure that that gasket stayed in place. Okay, let's see. I'm just looking for the blue. Make sure it's not folded in or sticking out. Uh, looks good. And looks good, okay. While we're in this area, I will go ahead and set this back into its position. And I'll start a couple of the bolts. Nuts, 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 not bolts just to start to reduce my fastener pile here. I'll torque all of these once I'm ready to install the bolts up here at the top. But uh, not right now, I can wait. Okay, let's move this party back over here to the passenger side. We're going to get these uh, crossover assembly gaskets in place and we're gonna bolt this guy back into its position. Okay, let's get this connector plugged back in. Uh, why aren't you clicking? Affirm that you are doing what I want. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's a silent click. Okay, I'll give this surfaces a good wipe down real fast like. And uh, then we can set those gaskets up and bolt this guy back on. So there's nothing here to locate these gaskets. So what I'm going to have to do is put a couple of the bolts in and then use the bolts themselves to hold the gaskets in position. It's kind of a delicate game we're playing here. Because if I bump the, the unit or move something around, then the gasket falls out and I have to start all over again, which would uh, be bad. And the space is rather limited. Oh, come here, AC line. You're, you're getting hung up become unstuck now there okay we'll get this one in down here and I don't think I have the right parts in here there we go here's one we'll run this guy in next there we go then I think this it's, I may have it upside down, yeah. This guy drops down like so. Oh, don't, don't fall out. I don't even think I have the right bolts just yet. In fact, I'm certain that I don't, but the idea is, is to mate these surfaces together and I can switch the bolts out later. Yeah, I'm certain those two back there are the 
of the wrong ones. They're way too long. Either way, this unit is now located in its position, so I can fish those bolts out and get the new one in. This one goes, nope. All right, the gasket stayed there. Let's switch this other big guy out with the shorter one. Not what she said. And this whole time I'm watching that gasket to make sure it doesn't fall. And we're good, it's in, okay. Still might have the wrong bolts in. No? Uh oh. I've confused myself. What have I done? Okay, I did find one that is the proper one for this area. It's this little shorty right there. Alright, that one's in. Now I can sort out these other ones that appear to be the wrong length. Yeah, that one's wrong. Oop, wrong direction. Yeah, this one bottomed out. So I have the wrong bolt. Yeah, this one goes here. So let's run that guy down. Click. Okay, I found the one I was missing. It was hiding under some other bolts. That one goes there. Click. Ah, I know what I've done. I forgot this bracket and this bracket is what gives me the appropriate amount of space. That's that's where I screwed up. Yeah, that guy goes in there. So I think I need to set the power steering pump in place before I apply any final torque to these bolts here and before I put this bracket in. So I'm I skipped a step. That's that's where I became lost. So let's back up some and put this. Oh, I'm in your face. Let's get our power steering pump in position first. Yeah, that's got to go in first because these lines fit behind the bracket right over here. So now that that's in there, I can set this bracket up and uh, keep moving forward. That is where I failed. That one there, that one there. Now we're in good shape, okay. Cool, back on track. Yeah, there we go. Now we're back in business. Okay. Okay, if you recall, these things were uh, at a higher torque level than um, what my quarter inch ratchet can provide. So I'm gonna bring these up to some final torque manually. Click. Here's number three. And kick. And we've got these little guys down here. Light's getting a little scarce. Let's try, let's try that. There. And there's a hidden little guy down under that confused me at first. There it is. Okay, we're good to go. Let's bolt the power steering pump back on and we'll slide the alternator in set this motor mount back up and then get the belt back on all right nader time for you to go back down into your home which is right about here and i'm gonna locate it with uh, this big bolt right there And then 
I've got this big bull and then the one that was studded. Let's go on in this order here. I'm gonna try to keep a good view for you guys. That may prove to be a little tough. But let's see, see if I can work this out. I'm actually looking at the camera since I can't see the hole in there. Okay, I think that one got started. Yeah, there's one. Whoop. Stay. And this is our second one. The reason it's studded is because it uh, there's a 10 mil nut that goes on top of this to hold down part of the power steering lines. So they use one fastener for two different purposes. Clever, no? Okay, that one started as well. I can tighten those down next. Almost there. There we go. That one's tight and uno mas. Fortunately, I was able to run those down with my fingers. Oh, light's in the way. Move, light. Get out of there. One more pull, click. Okay, nader's installed. Let's go around the back side of the nader. We'll connect that and uh, get its power wire reconnected. Here's, there it is. There's the little uh, little bracket right there for the power steering line. Let's slip that over. Go on, connector. Do your thing. I'll do this last because this stuff is still kind of flippity floppity. Okay, next on my hit list here is going to be the three bolts that hold this uh, power steering pump. And I apologize again for the the obstruction, but this AC line is in the way, and I, I don't really want to discharge the system and remove the line. So we're just gonna have to deal with that for, for a moment or two, and then it will be over. Now we'll get that next guy in position. Oh, that was, I totally missed the hole on that one. Uh oh, let's back up and try again. That was a fail. Completely missed. Let's start with the top one. Maybe that'll be easier. Yeah. Never ends. Next. Yeah. Whoa, hit you guys in the face. Sorry. Twice. Close quarters combat. Click. Ah! Sorry. I swear I'm not doing that on purpose. There we go. Okay. Pumps installed. Uh, what to do next? Let's see, I got all this stuff set up here. This is all good. Let's see, we've got a, oh, there's a pulley that goes on down here. We can get that guy in. Can you see? No. And I believe that one was a 15 millimeter. Yes. All right, that's 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 silly. I gotta stop. Everyone's gonna walk away from this video with a black eye. Final click. There, a little bit of an angle change. Let's get this uh, motor mount bracket. It's more of a torque mount, really, rather than an engine mount. Uh, regardless of whatever it's called, let's put that in. 
don't hit you guys in the face. Here, we'll go in from the back. Click. Whoa, I caught it that time. There. Let's see, these guys, that goes there, but the belt routes around through that, so I will do that last. Which means I have to get a couple pulleys installed. I've got two more idler pulleys. There's one. And uh, here's the other. Um, oh, shnikes, which one went where? Witness marks. Okay, that's got a whole bunch of tangs on it, and so does that surface there. So this one went in this position. That looks right. And that means that this one goes down here in this position. Oh, I'm dumb. The bolts are different sizes, so I could not have gotten those backwards. Okay. Either way, my tactics were still effective. What was that? Wow. You're a funny guy. And by funny, I mean like, like second grader funny. That's as bad as the, what's the capital of Thailand joke? If you know, you know. Final torquage. Fair. And what was that, a 13 on that stud? Yes, it was. Sure. Let's see if I cannot finagle a tool. Ah, look at that space created. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, let's set up the belt. I think that's, uh, I think that would be the next best logical maneuver here. Now, since this belt is most of the way out, and it's covered in oil, I'm gonna pull it out and kind of wipe it off. And that'll give me an opportunity to turn it around so the letters are facing the correct direction. Because that bottle, I'll clean it just by pulling it through a towel here and wiping off all that oil that's been dripping on it forever. Yeah, look at that, it's nasty. All right, let's drop her down inside here. It's getting a little dark, so I apologize if you guys can't see. I had to switch flashlights due to uh, low battery. Uh, that's going to be fun to reach, but I can do it because the rule is if I can see it, I can reach it. Except for this time. Um, more slack. And under the water pump we go. I always start with the crank pulley. All right, it is, there we go, it's on the crank pulley. It also found its way over top of the AC compressor pulley. Let's see, this one goes down under like so. And then we pull it through under the mount. Over the power steering. What is going on over there? See the guy across the shop making all that noise. He uh, he doesn't really appreciate my uh, my interweb activities. He's one of those uh, real life haters. So whenever the music gets uh, obnoxious and loud or silly, something like that, it's uh, it's that guy trying to uh, trying to sabotage things. There's really nothing to be done about it. You just ignore the trolls for the most part. I can't really pin his comments because those are real life comments. Uh oh, I got myself stuck. Yeah, he's being obnoxious, but that's okay. We've all been there when we were six. Okay, now this is gonna be the fun part. We gotta go straight down from the nader behind the tensioner. And I don't, actually I'm gonna need slack, so I'll pull this off the idler pulley. There we go. We go down, slip it behind this tensioner. Okay, Oop. flashlight gravity, just a little bit. 
All right, we're behind the tensioner now. It's on the tensioner pulley. It's on the crankshaft idler. Power steering's good. Okay, so this one goes under this idler right here, and then we will untension the tensioner and bring it up and over the power steering. That's the plan. You guys still can't see me. Need more lumens. There. Oh, so close. All right. You know what? I'm going to pull this off the alternator and use that as my last pulley, I think. I think that's what I want to do. It's either going to work or it's not. All right, here goes nothing. Oh yeah, got it. It's good. Okay, belt's on. Give it back to me. There. Okay, now we can put this torque mount back. That's just uh, two more bolts. Flashlight, gravity. Click. Very good, okay. I think we're done on this side. Let's get the plenum installed and uh, bolt on some of these accessories up in the front here, like this coolant bypass hose. Um, I've already taken the liberty of cleaning out the bore and replacing the O-ring. So we'll just get this set up in its home. Maybe. Where's the brackets? Oh, you know what? I gotta go up and over that dipstick tube. That's what I did wrong here. I forgot. And we've got two more bolts that hold this assembly down to the cylinder head. So let's throw those in, I believe. That's one of them. No, they were bigger than that, 13s. Yep, found them. They're the ones also covered in uh, oil, oil crust or whatever. Bring the injector harness back over and prep this to plug back in. I'm gonna go see if I have some wire loom for this. This, this right here is absolutely horrendous. I'll be right back. Okay, I do have, looks like three quarter inch. This is the last of it, but it, uh, this should do the job. Not my favorite stuff in the world. Mostly because I, I hate to install it. I shouldn't say hate. There's too much hate in the world. I strongly dislike installing wire loom. But we're done properly. The finished product is kind of worth it. All right, let's shove that last little bit in. And I'll cut it to fit. My razor blade. Hmm. No, side cuts. Okay, me thinks right here should be good. These really aren't even cutting. I don't like this stuff. Okay, that's good. All right. Let's plug this guy in. 
blinded by the light. Click, and this thing, where does this go? Uh, I think that's for the mass airflow sensor. I'll do that later. Now the question is, is this gonna fit around these little clamps? Or are the clamps going to fit around the loom? And the answer is barely, okay. Yeah, it kind of fits. Not this one, maybe. I don't know, can't make up my mind. Like it does, but it doesn't there. Okay, there's an improvement. The intake manifold, the upper manifold is almost ready to go in. So let's uh, put these gaskets in place. And they're located with little tabs right here that press into uh, holes that are drilled in the lower intake. Keeps it from sliding around. Ah, flashlight gravity. Okay, fast forwarding some. I did add some more wire loom to a few other circuits here, especially the stuff that was routed around corners or the sharp edges. So I, I think I'm good for that. We're good with that for now. Let's get the uh, intake set up. That is next on my list. Um, fit. What are, we, what are we doing here? What's going on? Oh, the bracket's in the way. There. Okay, that's in place. Okay, let's move up here for a better view. Yeah. All right, so I've got this uh, spark plug wire bracket on. All the bolts are in. Let's go ahead and run these down and then we can bolt on the coil pack back here, get everything plugged back in and then we'll go move on to the intake tubing and ducting and whatnot. We should be finished. Click. That didn't go that way. Something's wrong here. Oh no, no it goes, it goes this way. There's witness marks right here. I had it fast backwards. Let's try this again. Click. I'll torque wrench these real quick. Uh, they are again 25 foot pounds. And proof I did not over torque them. Click. Click. Good. Okay, down over here on the driver's side, there's one more bracket left over for uh, these hoses. Let's manhandle that into, into place. <clears throat> That's tight. I'm gonna need two hands for that one. I'll clip you guys on to this. There you go. You hang out on that fuel line. Can you see? Hope so. There. Pasa, amigo? No, I'm just waiting for this job to get approved. Oh, never. Let's see, that goes right there. And this one. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, this one. Let's see what we got here. Let's go ahead and hook that up. This guy goes over here. So far, so good. Missing. I'm missing an evap line. Where does this one go? No, 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 no. I don't know. Pause. Okay, I figured it out. This one goes right here on uh, the intake tube. So I'll do that last. This one, however, goes over here somehow, some way, because it plugs in 
to this little coolant fitting right there. Is there a seal on that? No, I don't think there is. That's odd. What's going on with this? There should be a seal. Maybe not. Let's wipe it off. Yes, there is a teeny tiny O-ring on there. It's not much of an O-ring anymore. Let's get that guy out of there and replace it with a new one. A lot of crust in that thing too. There's rusty stuff everywhere. Scrape that out. Okay. Okay, I've got a new one that fits. So, oh, there you go. So let's plug this guy in. Right, like so. We'll give it some wiggles so it seats. And then once it's flush, we'll tighten it down with the bolt. Wherever that is. nice and secure okay you guys remember this uh, fitting right here for the vacuum port it has been re teflon coated so it does not leak let's get that guy screwed in and I think after that I will finally get around to bolting on that uh, coil pack fail had the slippage. Oh no. Tell me that just slipped and didn't break. Okay. No, I broke it. I broke it a lot. So now I gotta do to do. Shut up, phone. I'm not in the mood. Now I have to dig this thing out. That's uh, That was a major epic fail on my part. Um, I'm just gonna hit it with a screwdriver and, and just dig into it and back out the threads. I'll, this is gonna take me a minute. I'll be back when I, uh, when I get that thing extracted. Epic fail. Okay, crisis averted. I, I actually ended up pulling this intake off and I drilled that thing out and uh, I couldn't get the threads to come out, the threaded portion, so I went over and grabbed the torch and shot the torch inside of here and just melted it all away. Uh, that proved to be highly effective and uh, after that, I brake clean the interior of this out and spray it out with compressed air to remove any debris that may have been present. So we are now back on track with the exception of that fitting that I do not have. And, and here's the there's the other side of it. I, I ruined it. Oops, failure. Oh well, but we can still continue and proceed until that uh, new component arrives, which is exactly what I'm going to do. manual click oh I also uh, put these alternator cables on when you guys weren't looking I'm trying as best I can to uh, not waste click valuable video time while I'm uh, getting the ancillary components installed the two nuts are on at the bottom of this I'll reach in and torque those in a minute let's see let's plug let's plug this guy in real quick so we don't forget Click. Okay, I've got the spark plug wires moved over into position. I want to get those guys installed next. Turn that stuff off. Let's see, this one's labeled six, and we have six right here. That one goes there. And two to two. Okay, those guys are all in position. Let's lock them down. And our little clamping device here. Um, you can click anytime. There we go. Okay, so that's good. Plug wires are on. Uh, and I think next I just got to get the intake tubing and the air box in and uh, we'll raise this thing up, spill the oil and coolant out that was in there, and uh, then refill it and restarting the engine. This is the fuel line safety clip right here. We don't want to forget that. There we go. Uh, let's see that guy goes in there. We're good Everything's looking good so far except for the stuff that I broke um, da -dum, da -dum, dum dum Okay, all right, so we're almost in the home stretch here with the exception of that little uh, Tube that I broke off um, We called the dealer and uh, the little components about a week out which um, uh, That's not gonna work for us. So uh, 
I'm gonna try to locate one out of the salvage yard. I imagine there's quite a few of these hanging out in there. Uh, that being said, we're almost at the end here, so I'm gonna finish putting the rest of this away, and then we're gonna get to that moment that I think we're all waiting for. We're gonna pull the oil drain plug out and uh, just see whatever, see what's left over inside of there. So let's uh, throw this tubing and ducting and whatnot back together, and then we'll lift this thing up and uh, go on down below pull that drain plug. Yep, that one clicks on right there. Let's see, this guy goes under here because it has to bolt in. I think that's my last bolt. Uh, these were from something else that got new bolts, so, uh, or nuts. Yeah, that's the last one on this car. Let's you gonna thread? What are you doing? Yep. Click. Okay, yep, I knew this was for a mass airflow. Had to have been. Let's see here. Let's finagle this thing in, uh, in place. Go in there. What are you doing there? Got it. You go here. You go here, click and snap. Nice. And I need a screwdriver. My pile is a mess. Look at this. This is insane. It's like all my tools are out here and not in here where they're supposed to be. Look at that. The drawer's empty. Slob. Oh well. Work first, make money second, clean third. This is the order of operations. Yeah, I know, not driver. Or socket, but I feel like using the screwdriver, so that's just how it's gonna be. Okay, I'm not gonna throw the cover on this just yet because I have to gain access to that, so that can wait till later, but I can pick up the rest of my mess. And moving on up. You know what, actually, I need to, uh, need to bring this hood down some because it may interfere with the ceiling. Okay, oil's draining. Just pulled the filter off. We're gonna spin a new filter on, plug this back up, refill the oil, and then I think what I'll do is just plug that vacuum port that uh, has the broken fitting. That way we can start this engine up. We'll back it out, hose everything off, refill the coolant, and uh, I'll just park it and stage it pending arrival of that replacement fitting. Time to light the internet on fire. I'm gonna put the oil filter on and uh, I'm not going to put oil on the O-ring because look, look, the O-ring surface has oil on it. So I don't have to put more oil on anything. I'm just gonna screw the filter on. Look at that. I know, you're doing it wrong. You should be fired. Lose your license. You're the bane of society. Click. Do, 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 do. All right, that's enough draining. Let's put this plug back in. Oh, I'm lubricated. Do, 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 do. Sing it, Petey. No, not the song, the phone ring. Little goober. Let's see what we got here. Wrench 30. Click. All right, let's let this thing down and fill all the orifices with the proper fluids. And uh, we will starting the engine. After I get my flashlights out. There. You guys go over there. Okay, time for five quarts of five winter 30 engine oil. Reset. Begin pumping now. That's almost done. Okay, done. That's 4.8, a little bit more. Nine, five, there we go. Five quarts and uh, start throwing some coolant in. Oh, that's super tight. What are we gonna do with this? 
This is my favorite. Man. No, I don't have it. So you wrench on something like that, and then it breaks loose, then you scrape your knuckles across the little clamp and cause an injury. Oh, wow. Don't slow down. Yeah, don't slow down. Don't stop. Keep going. You're not even. Well, I'm not done. Keep going. That was me. I just slowed down, bro. He didn't get it. Yeah, he, he didn't get it. I don't work on that shit. You all right? Oh, people are losing it. It's like we all have a case of the Fridays, but it's only Wednesday. You're not wrong. Oh uh, yeah, that conversation went a little sideways, so I had to uh, I had to park uh, park that one. All right, it's got some coolant in it, but I'm gonna need some more. I threw the cap. Flashlight gravity. Again, threw the cap back on, oil caps back on. We're all put together. Um, let's see, I need to plug this hole. Here, we'll just shove a paper towel in there. That'll work. Just to stop the ginormous vacuum leak. There, stick that in there. All right, let's go starting the engine. All right, this is first start after Nothing like that, we're good to go. Start refilling the coolant now that I'm sure it's slurped up some of it. Uh, no, it hasn't, there's plenty in there. All right, let's let that hang out for a while. Vacuum leaks good. Oh. All right guys, I'm gonna close this one out. Uh, there's nothing really much to see here afterwards except for replacing that little nippy thing that I broke off. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna let this thing come up to temp, check the oil and the rest of the fluid levels, see what we can do about that missing little guy. And uh, when I'm done, I'll go hose it off and we can uh, return this to my consumer. So all that being said, as always, doo -doo 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 -doo, I'd like to thank, <laughs> I'd like to thank all you guys for watching this series of videos. Certainly appreciate you staying here till the end. The only thing I would ask of you is that if you like these videos, please let me know about that by tappy tapping that like button down below. Please feel free to drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, I have to remind you guys to not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Real quick, since we're still here, let's look down a little bit deeper. We're looking for some leaks. I'm not seeing any. This is good. Yeah, all is well. Mission complete. Ah!